that's right waiting for me. I'm waiting for you. We were getting silent. So used to uh, beginning with so much music that uh, I'll get used to the silence. Okay. Um, so a while back in one of the Bible studies, I got asked why Lutherans don't talk more about the devil, and I my response would be something like, "Well, we don't want to give the devil too much to do." <laughs> um, but today the lesson talks about uh, interaction between Jesus and Satan, or the devil, and. Uh, We'll see what we can do with that. But before we begin, I want to give you <coughs> a little confirmation lesson, okay, from uh, Luther's large catechism on the Lord's Prayer, where it says, uh, God, lead us not into temptation. It goes like this. Luther writes, uh, Then comes the devil, who baits and badgers us on all sides, and especially exerts himself where the conscience and spiritual matters are concerned. His purpose is to make us scorn and despise both the word and the works of God, to tear us away from faith, hope, and love, to draw us into unbelief, false security, stubbornness, or on the contrary, to drive us into despair, denial of God, blasphemy, and countless other sins. Every Christian must endure such great and perilous attacks, grievous enough, even though they come one at a time. Uh, as long as we remain in this life, we are attacked, hunted, and harried on all sides, constrained to cry out and pray every hour that God may not allow us to become faint or weary, to fall back into sin, shame, and unbelief. Otherwise, it is impossible to overcome even the smallest attack. This, <coughs> excuse me, this then is what leading us not into temptation means. When God gives us the power and strength to resist, even though the attack is not removed or ended, for no one can escape temptations and allurements as long as we live in the flesh and have the devil prowling around us. Um, to experience attack, therefore, is quite different from consenting or saying yes to. So Luther has some things to say about the uh, attacks we are under by temptations, and that it's kind of this daily sense of um, going back to our baptismal identity and trusting in God. So we'll see what we can make of, of uh, Satan and Jesus this morning in the gospel lesson. All right? So here we go. As you're able. And we'll begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be our God who journeys with us each day. Blessed be our Savior Jesus Christ who heals our brokenness. Blessed be the Holy Spirit who sustains us with gifts of grace. Amen. Amen. In thanksgiving for God's mercy, we turn in repentance. Loving, Loving God, God, we, we confess, confess to you our faults and failures. failures. We, we neglect your word, we take instead of giving, we spoil rather than steward your creation. In place of healing, we prosper, in place of compassion, we fall into fear. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us into following your way of life. Now hear the good news. God in mercy embraces and forgives you in the name of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
our strength before every temptation. Hold us steadfast in your promises, and when we fall, raise and restore us to the love of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. A reading is from Genesis, the second and third chapters. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you should not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman said that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sold big leaves together and made loins cloth for themselves. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please join me in the reading of Psalm 32 responsibly. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose son is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord will keep so guilt, and in his spirit there is no God. Why, I held my tongue and my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, and they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding. You must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. A reading from Romans, the fifth chapter. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because of all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law. But sin is not reckoned upon there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those who sin were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who has to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many die through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass 
brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Word of God, word of life. fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. So the tempter came and said to him, Well, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took Jesus to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, Well, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, Well, again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And the devil said to Jesus, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And the devil left Jesus, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, please be seated. So this is... Uh, a little bit embarrassed, embarrassing for a pastor to admit, but when I first looked at this lesson from Matthew, my thoughts jumped back about 50 years to a TV show. Any of you remember the comedian Flip Wilson? <laughs> okay. You remember him dressing up like Geraldine Jones, you know, his boyfriend, or her boyfriend, Killer? But every time Geraldine Jones did something racy or something wrong, she would say, the devil, the devil made me do it, yeah. Well, I remember it got lots of laughs, uh, funny laughs, maybe some uncomfortable laughs, right? It's probably the most famous part of a comedy that Flip Wilson is famous for. The thing is, the devil made me do it is really just a subtle way not to take personal responsibility, right? Or blame. It helps put that blame somewhere else. If you're on a diet, <laughs> but you ate the cupcake anyway. <laughs> if you bought something you really couldn't afford, you say, if you're caught doing something you shouldn't have done, <laughs> not my fault. Not my fault. <laughs> the devil made me do it, right? So, as I said at the beginning, Lutheran Christians don't talk about the devil very much. We don't want to give the devil too much due, right? But, this Gospel lesson does talk about Jesus and what the devil uh, tries to make him do. As you uh, listen to the lesson, maybe you caught on that, that for Matthew, 
Israel and Jesus, Matthew kind of draws a pretty strong comparisons between the two in this way. Israel was tempted for 40 days and 40 night or 40 years, sorry, 40 years in the wilderness. Jesus is tempted 40 days and 40 nights. Israel was challenged by hunger in the wilderness. Remember the manna and the quail stories? Yeah. Jesus is hungry 40 days after fasting, and the temptation is stones to bread. Israel was challenged to uh, trust in God's presence and protection in the wilderness all those years, but they end up with the golden calf, right? Jesus is challenged to test God's presence and protection from the top of the angels, or top of the temple, um, because angels will protect him. Israel is tempted to worship the gods of other nations. Jesus is in, invited to stop trusting God, to bow down to money and power and evil so that he could get everything he wanted, right? Um, parallels back and forth for Matthew. And he sees Jesus a bit as a, a new Moses in that way. Now I imagine if Jesus failed any part of his testing, he could have pulled a Flip Wilson routine, right? Claim, the devil made me do it. The good news in this lesson is God so strengthened Jesus that uh, God helps Jesus not to do it, right? But what about us? When we give in to temptations, uh, who do we blame? I mean, it's tempting to blame our failures on uh, the power of evil, or blame it on somebody else or something else, right? Think about a time you got caught by a teacher or a parent, dead to rights, doing what you ought not to have been doing. Does it sound familiar to say things like, well, it wasn't me, it wasn't my fault, they made me do it, or maybe we fall back on, well, the devil made me do it too, right? The devil, you say. But back to the Gospel story. A lot of uh, Bible scholars and Bible versions of this story call this the temptation of Jesus. But that puts the focus on the devil and on the power of evil to trick and deceive Jesus, right? The good news is Jesus is tempted, but does not give in. But what I like is some scholars and some Bible versions don't call this the temptation of Jesus. They call it the testing of Jesus. They talk about this being a challenge to Jesus' baptismal identity, right? Baptized by John, raised from the water, and the word is, this is my son, the beloved. So Jesus is tested to see whether or not he will trust God and God's claim on him through that baptism. Um, what I read to you from Luther's large catechism uh, says that God indeed tempts no one to sin, but perhaps God indeed tests everyone towards faith. That there's a difference between evil's testing or evil's tempting and God's testing. Temptation seeks to lead you to do what's wrong, to give in, to be unfaithful. But testing seeks to lead you to do what's right, to become strong, to be faithful. Temptations are most often about what you want or what you fear. Testing is always about who do you trust and whose are you in Christ Jesus. So with this kind of strange story of Satan and Jesus, what is it that we're to learn? After all, the Bible stories are meant to be for us faith lessons. Well, what we learn in the lessons today is that time and again, Israel failed its testing and gave into temptation. They put the blame on the serpent or on the Satan or on the devil or on other nations, and sometimes they even put the blame on God. Time and again, Jesus passes his testing refuses the temptation to deny his identity in God, 
and he gives credit to the one who calls and claims and keeps promises. Well, those are good lessons to learn. But maybe at its heart, this story is about our own testing by God, by God's call for us to be faithful, for God's desire for us to be faithful in the face of all temptations, right? Those that surround all of us. Temptations to forget who we are and whose we are, to forget our purpose and our mission, to forget who is the source of our hope and the center of our trust. Maybe it works like this. In our lifelong pursuit of security, which we seek to find through wealth and power and possessions, Jesus pulls out that Bible verse from Deuteronomy and says, remember, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Or, or in our own frequent desire and wish that God would prove himself, show himself, be kind of a genie that does our bidding and grants all our wishes and wants. Jesus pulls out another Bible verse and says, it is written, do not put your Lord to the test. Right? Or in our willingness to trust in our financial power or our military power or our top rank in the world or our cries of USA, USA, supposedly as the only nation under God, Jesus pulls out another verse from Deuteronomy and says, worship the Lord your God serve only him, only him. So day by day, it seems to me that we are indeed being tested and trained not to give in to temptations like these. We have far more bread than we need, but are tempted not to share it equitably with the hungry world. And I think we do often in our head and in our heart Treat God like some kind of heavenly Walmart with stacked shelves of all those goodies. We want them to be delivered to us with some kind of heavenly Amazon, right? We want what we want when we want it. And we, got, we want God to do that, to prove that God cares. Right? And we'll talk a little bit more about this, but more than ever, Many among us are being tempted by that siren call of Christian nationalism that tries to turn God into a tribal God meant just for us, and that tries to turn our leaders into rulers instead of servants, right? In the process, too many of us are willing to settle for partisanship instead of discipleship. What's our excuse for giving in? all these things? It seems to me that this is indeed our time of testing, our time of challenge by God to choose what is right, what is faithful, what is compassionate, and what is of service to others, right? It's our time to resist greed and power when it oppresses, our time to resist putting our trust in anything or anyone other than the God who makes and keeps promises, our time to remember whose we are, to remember our identity as someone baptized into Jesus Christ and made a servant of the living God. You know, Flip Wilson, Geraldine, maybe was right that often the devil makes us do it. But Jesus is far more right in teaching us that God gives us the means not to fall into temptations. God gives us with the power to embrace that life that God calls us to live out. The good news, instead of the devil all around us, we get the angels all around us who come to protect and strengthen us all as baptized children of God in Christ Jesus. That truth that gift will help us pass the test, the testing, and hopefully pass by every evil temptation. And if that's true, that's good, good news indeed.
Please stand as we sing our hymn of the day, as you are able. of mercy, we pray for the church, the world, and all people in need. You alone are God. Gift all your children with vision and wisdom, and guide us into a faithful, robust future. Merciful God. We receive our prayer. Bless all who work the ground to feed a starving world. Bless all who share what is gathered to feed a hungry people. Nourish us all by the fruits of their labor. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You know our temptations, Lord. Kindle our resistance. Return us to your ways. Surround us and all with your steadfast love and care. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Gracious God, through baptism, you bring us into your family and call us your own. You shower us with gifts of faith and love and new life. Continue to pour out your gifts upon White, who celebrates this week your baptismal welcome. Merciful God. Be a fortress and a hospital, Lord, for those in illness or distress. In times of trouble and trauma, hold us near and dear. We pray especially this day for Dutch and Carol, duty. Carol and Robert and Aaron and Dick and Cindy and Don and Kathy and Terry and Christy and Thomas and Bobby. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. And for what and whom else do we pray? A thankful prayer for um, my son Jared that hurts in the eye. I was working with some kind of rubbery and thankfully. as he celebrates his 20th birthday mm -hmm. today that um, God would protect him and guide him and give him hope for his future. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Those who have gone before us, we give you thanks and praise. We remember this day Debbie Oakman and Al Goodwin. Be with their families and friends in their grieving. Bring them comfort and consolation. Unite us all in your love until our journey too is complete. In you we do trust. Amen.
as an excellent Lutheran Christian. God is our refuge. We continue with the offertory prayer. And again, thank you for all the ways you support the ministry of Christ the King. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of the gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ. The wellspring of eternal life. Amen. Should have had you stand so that you can share the peace of Christ with everyone. May the peace of Christ be with you all. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the God of all. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now with this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast and grace our table with your presence. Amen, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of this bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us, and then send us forth, burning with justice and peace and love. Amen, Holy Spirit. With the holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with the sun and moon and stars, we too praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for and Come and read.
refugee, come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. You may be seated and come forward. Please gather around the altar.
Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, keep you in his love and grace and mercy now and forever. Amen. Embody God. At, at your table, table we have tasted the goodness, the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes, eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. God, giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, Holy Spirit, giver of rebirth, bless and sustain you on your journey. Amen. Amen.
Okay, and the 22nd, we have the meal again, and we need somebody to volunteer to head that up. If it's soup or whatever it is, um, we need somebody who will be responsible for that. But this is a joint venture. We have other people who use our facility on Wednesday evenings, and our custodian, Rose, cleans the church on Wednesday, and she's a woman with a full schedule. And so we are trying to just share community with another congregation in the midst of this. And I'm just trusting that you can find your way down the street to United Lutheran and meet the lovely people of United Lutheran. Thank you. Um, then, uh, Thursday, choir and worship team, Friday chair exercises, and then on Sunday, uh, Pastor Kim will be with us again, coffee hour, and then worship at Dave's Tavern. So, um, Pastor Kim, it's yours. Yeah, a couple. So on, on the Tuesdays, um, we've already looked at one of Jesus' grandmas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Bathsheba. And we're going to look at two more of Jesus' grandmas, uh, Tamar and Rahab, of all people. And then we'll end with... Uh, a Jewish story about uh, Susanna and the prophet Daniel. And after that, I think we'll go back to uh, the lectionary studies, unless the group comes up with another another theme, okay? Uh, but none of this, would, I promised a pastor in Olympia that I would help him when he moves. He's moving on Tuesday, so I have to keep my promise. Uh, a couple other things, kind of quickly. The uh, Lutheran Church Missouri Synod president put out a statement um, about the growing uh, presence of Christian nationalism, both in our country, in the world, and among Lutherans, uh, and said it's a real concern, uh, to the point of, he said, that if Lutheran Christians don't uh, renounce or repent of embracing Christian nationalism, in the Missouri Synod, they'll be excommunicated. That is uh, pretty serious stuff. Wow. I've been talking with uh, Seth uh, Dolan from PLU, and we're trying to come up with a Sunday where he can come and address our uh, adult ed on what Christian nationalism, uh, nationalism is. We're looking at the possibility of March 16th or no, March 19th or April 16th. Uh, sooner would be nicer, but we have to work it with his schedule. He does a two-hour presentation. The pastor that day might make a short service uh, so that we can give him a little more time to teach us. Then at the end of April and early May, uh, to follow up on our two sessions about sexuality, I'm in conversation with uh, four different speakers uh, to come in on a Sunday, the first time to talk to us about a biblical sexuality, what the Bible teaches, then uh, someone to come in um, and talk to us about human sexuality, kind of the biology of our development. Then we'll have a speaker here uh, that uh, was recommended to me that will talk about uh, LGBTQIA plus uh, concerns and issues and uh, things. And then um, I'm hoping to follow that up with a parent panel. Uh, we have a speaker who, who will come talk to us about what it's like to raise um, alphabet people, rainbow children. And, uh, and that's a follow-up because when we met those two times, one of the things that you as members talked about was we made a decision. We really don't know really what it means about the decision we made. And we have lots of questions about sexuality in, in the alphabet group. So hopefully we can do this um, and you'll be invited for four of those sessions, right? And I think that is all I know, students, right? Go in peace, serve in love. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And don't let the devil make you do it. <laughs>
Bye, everybody.